everybody. Today we're going to make cashew crusted cauliflower steaks from the amazing The Minimalist Baker and I'll put a link to the recipe. So the first thing you need is a beautiful head of cauliflower. You are going to pull the leaves off and then cut it but don't completely cut the stem. Kind of that's going to keep it together while we cut our steaks but you do want to try to pull off some of this excess or cut it off and when possible getting an organic cauliflower just to reduce the risk of chemicals being ingested. Okay so you do want to keep this little I call it the brain stem <laughs> so your cauliflower doesn't completely fall apart so that is very important. Now if you can just visualize, we're going to turn it on its stem and visualize three steaks. So, and you're going to have some ends and that's okay because you can batter those up and they, they all taste the same. It's just going to look a little different. So I'm intentionally just going to cut this little end off and we'll make use of it. And then I'm going to cut, let's see, one, two, three. Let's see how we do here. That might be a little big. Whoops, sorry. Let's try again here. I'm going to try a little thinner. There. There's a good steak. <laughs> Take some finesse. And then you can kind of tweak the little stem if you want. Or you can just cook it. Okay, so let's try again. We have our steaks at our, for our anniversary at a vegan restaurant in downtown San Diego and they were amazing. So I always wanted to learn how to make them. So here's another good one. And thanks to Minimalist Baker, we have a great recipe now. Oops. You gotta really just cut straight down. Okay, I can probably get one more. Cauliflower is so good for you. I actually prefer cauliflower over broccoli all the time. It's got so much fiber and nutrition. You know what? That one's not actually that bad that way it is, but let's just cut off the end. Well, that's okay. <laughs> she said three. We got three good ones here. Four. Okay. Now what we're going to do, and I'm going to take these little pieces because that's inevitable take them over to the stove and you're going to boil these, steam these on the stove top first so that they're tender inside and then when you bake them then they're going to be crispy on the outside. So first we are going to steam. So come with me. So I've had about an inch of water boiling on the stove with a steam basket which is very easy to find. So I'll start with my whole pieces here. Two. Seems a little loose, but will work. But I don't want to waste the little side ends because we definitely want to eat all of this, right? So I'm just going to gently place those on top. This is my second time to make it. I made it last week and thought it was amazing. So I'm grateful to share this recipe and to have it. So we're going to leave it in there about four to five minutes, okay? Then we're going to come back and work on a few of the other things, the sauce, okay? So we need cashews. So you take a cup and a half of raw cashews, and I've showed these before, from Costco. These are organic raw, so they're not roasted or anything. I'm just gonna add a little more because I was snacking on them. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> And then we're going to put them in a food processor versus the Vitamix, okay? So we're going to use the food processor, which is actually super easy. Like I said before, I used to be intimidated by any recipe that said food processor. I'm over it now. So do that. Add our cashews. Now, she recommends a variety of spices that you could do a tape, excuse me, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and you just pick your preference. 
curry powder. This one's empty, but it's curry powder. Teaspoon of paprika, give or take, whatever's your preference. And if you like spicy cayenne, but like an eighth of a teaspoon max, <laughs> probably even less. The recipe says an eighth, but you can leave it out, okay? Then you can also add a teaspoon of salt or less. So I'm going to start with some salt. I'll do a half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to add in three tablespoons of arrowroot starch. Now this is going to help bind everything together, the batter, when we go to coat the steaks once they're done steaming. So we're going to add three tablespoons of arrowroot. Now it will say starch slash flour. This is from Bob's Road Mill. Now if you ever have a recipe that has corn starch and your body sensitive to corn, you can use arrowroot. And it has that same binding effect like the crispy baked tofu that's on our channel. It's awesome. It's the best. It uses arrowroot starch. I'm making a mess here. Okay. Now, sadly, my body is a little sensitive to spice, so I'm going to let Wade doctor up, sprinkle a little bit on his own steaks. <laughs> And I'm gonna do something a little different for myself, so I'll show you that in a minute. So we're gonna blend this concoction of cashews, arrowroot starch slash flour, and salt. Pretty finely, okay, so it doesn't need to be chunky. Once you have your spices, it'll be more of an orangish color, okay? So we're going to take this coating and pour it in a bowl. So you can dip your steaks in there. Then, whoops, excuse me, in another bowl, you're going to add a cup of unsweetened plant milk. I'm using almond milk. You can see how we make our own homemade almond milk on my channel. Super easy. And I found you might not even need a cup. Okay, and then we're going to add a tablespoon of lemon juice. And I've shown this before. Organic lemon juice from Costco. tablespoon of lemon okay. to that. Now, since my body is sensitive to processed spices, sadly, but it loves regular garlic, so I'm going to add, I'm going to do a little experiment tonight and add a half a teaspoon of minced garlic to the batter. So once we dip it, it will still be getting some garlic flavor. It, okay, so when they're done, we will roll it in there, and then roll it in there, and then we have one more thing, is there's this awesome little topping to put on top of your steak once it's cooked. You're going to do a couple tablespoons of chopped onion. You could do a red onion, which I recommend more than a white onion. Okay, and then you're going to add, actually I'm going to do more. She also recommends you could put hummus on top of your steak, and there's an oil-free hummus recipe on my channel. Okay, so I'm going to chop up the right onion, and let me get a little Tupperware here for it. And then we're going to do some dates, which are amazing and really add a punch of flavor to the steak. That was my favorite part. I would actually like to add even more dates. So I get these awesome organic medjool dates. 
from Costco. And you're gonna just make sure you get the pit out. Dates are actually high in minerals. They are good for you, so do not be afraid. Don't wanna sit down and eat the whole tub, but they have a lot of nutrition in them. Okay, let me get that. So I just wanna chop up the dates, which like to stick together. And you can add or subtract any of these ingredients if that doesn't suit your palate. Okay. A little hard to cut. I noticed last last week too because they like to stick together. So you can just tear them apart also a little bit. That was like my favorite part of the steak was having this little date topping. Now I've added some cilantro. I know there's a theory where you either love or hate cilantro. I love it. So I'm going to add a little chopped cilantro. You could definitely omit it. And then we're going to add three tablespoons of our lemon juice. So that's why I buy this jar of lemon juice ready made because I use it every day. I use a tablespoon of my green smoothie every morning and I usually use it for lunch or dinner, so I just, to omit some time in squeezing lemons, have fallen in love with this product, okay? Then we're gonna mix it together. I'm gonna switch it to this cup. And that will be what we put on top, which you'll see in a few, few minutes. I'll get a bigger bowl. Okay, but we'll just let those flavors come together, whoops. And then we will work on, we'll come back to that. We will work on dipping our steaks, okay? So let's go back to the stove and see how we're doing. All right. Looking pretty good. <laughs> All right, so let's bring it back over. running out of space in my little beach kitchen. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we can do here. I need a few more of these things. All right, grab a fork. See if we can keep them together. So I'm just gonna set these out initially. So those are fine. It's my big ones I want to keep together. There's a good one. All right, these are some of the little guys we put on top, and I will come back and do those at the end on my own. Okay, so you can see. Oh boy. Here we go. Voila. <laughs> That's our first steak. I'm gonna put it in the almond milk and lemon juice. And just do a little gentle because it is fragile. And then we're gonna take it over here and flip it around. Definitely don't wanna steam them too long, which I might have done because it's a little soft. She recommends a little salt on each side. Okay, and you can omit salt. Okay, steak number one. <laughs> Voila, let's see if we can get another one going here. Those were the pieces. There we go. Okay. Let's take number two. I'm 
not going to flip that because it's starting to fall apart, but that's okay. We'll grab that one. Okay. So, you've got the idea here. Batter it. Just be really gentle. I'm just going to skip it. We'll just do this. Okay. Add a little salt. My fingers are nice and messy. <laughs> now, she says to drizzle, which is important to give it a little more crisp, some oil. Just, just a little bit. Avocado or extra virgin olive oil. And if you're oil free, you just skip that part, but I'm just gonna do a little bit more. So I'm gonna keep doing the rest of these steaks and then we're gonna do the little pieces also because we don't want the ends to go to waste. And you're gonna bake it at 425 for 25 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. So check it at 25 and they're gonna get crispy. I hate to say like fried food, but they're not fried, which is great. So I will see you in a little bit. We're back with our cauliflower steaks and we've added in some steamed asparagus. We just steamed these for six minutes, the last six minutes. And I only baked mine 25 minutes, so that's up to you. Then we're gonna add this amazing little date, lemon juice onion and optional cilantro topping, which really gives it again that punch of flavor. And then you can add what other, other spices you might like, more or less, salt and pepper. And it's so good, I hope you all will try it. So thank you always for watching and for saving animals with your food choices. Have a great week.